Hello everyone, my name is Greg and I dev stuff. Welcome everyone to episode 2 of Grid Map Unity tutorial. Today we are going to implement tile sets. Let's clean our root folder. This episode is brought to you by generous support of people on Patreon. If you want to join them, link to my Patreon in the description. Select the main camera and create a new script called Grid Control. This script will be responsible for game control about grid. Ability to click on it, select something, drag something, etc. etc. Open the newly created script. Create serialized field called target tile map of type tile map. Inside the update, if you click in left mouse button, use world to cell to get the position of the clicked cell by using the camera input mouse position. To convert mouse position to world position, use screen to world point. To make it easier to read, let's store world point into variable. and post the click position into the console. Let's test this. Create new tile map and assign its reference. Good. Now with the ability to click on the map, now we want to actually interact with our map. Make a serialized reference to Grid Manager. Inside Grid Manager we want to create a method which will set the state of the cell. This way we can access it from the grid control. Why wouldn't uh, we just make the grid public, you may ask? Because if we just make it public and set the state of the grid from the grid control, you need to always remember to call update tile map everywhere. You set the grid. And later on, it is very convenient to have one localized place responsible for interacting with your grid in the game. Remember that technically speaking, our grid is just a data storage container. It should stay that way. Its job is just store the state of your grid. Meanwhile, grid manager is responsible for interaction between game and this grid class. So he will be responsible for reading the grid, for setting or changing the state of the grid, etc. etc.
Let's test this. Good. Let's make a small optimization touch. Right now, every time you change the state of one tile, you are updating the whole map. You don't want to do this. Let's extract the update tile method, which will be responsible for updating up to date the tile in the tile map and call it inside our set. This way, we only updating the changed tiles rather than trying to meaninglessly update the whole map. Good. As you can see, if we click outside the boundaries, it will cause our game to still assign the tile uh, for no reason. This is because how we did our get check for boundaries. If you are outside the boundaries, get returns false, which correlate to the white tile. Don't worry, we will fix this very soon. Ok, we just introduced a simple way to interact with your grid. But now we want to make it so our grid will not be just a simple black and white squares. We want to apply a tile set to it. Let's create a new scriptable object called tile set. Inside declare public list of tile bases, which we will use to store the references to the tiles. Now create an instance of the tile set. And now you can assign tiles to the list. I have created few more tiles, as before it's just a solid color for now. Let's assign, let's say, three of them to the list. Good, now we want to change our grid map. Instead of bool array, we will be using an array of integers, where it will reference the ID of the tile inside the tile set. So for example, the first tile will be 0, second tile 1, third tile will be 2, etc, etc. Update the script for the changes we just did. Inside the get return minus 1 to tell to receiver that we are outside the boundaries. 
and he should not assign any kind of tile to this uh, tile. Inside the grid manager, remove everything from the update tile. Change the set to use integer. And now introduce serialized field for tile set. Use tile set for setting up the tile map tiles. Check if the position returns minus 1. That will mean that we are trying to set the tile outside the tile map boundaries. Then using the tile ID, get the tile from tile set and set it on the map. Good, and don't forget to fix the control. Then let's test this. As you can see we can change our styles and we are set setting some tiles to be blue on start rather than white. Or you can change tile references in the tile set. So for example right now first element is white and second element is black. If we exchange them you see the result. So why would you do this? You can agree uh, with your game designer that first element is for example possible open terrain. Second is wall and third is water or some kind of open air but not possible terrain. And now you have an interchangeable container for tiles. For example, let's try to create new tile set and use different tiles in it. As you can see, by just referencing different tile sets, we can change the visuals of our style map without changing what lies inside the grid. So on one tile set, our open field is white squares, in a different tile set, it is green. So you will be able to reuse the same map by just changing the tile set. For example, you may use it for seasons, like you have four seasons in your game and the same map can be covered by a different season. So you have four tile sets 
one for each season and you just use the appropriate tile set for your season. There will be a lot more for this in the episodes to come, but that will, would be it for now. Good, this is it for this episode. I, if you have any questions or any ideas about code, please leave your comment below. If you are interested in seeing what will come out of this, please subscribe. If you want to support further, you can find my Patreon in the description. Special thank you to Stefan and Cameron Smith for their generous support. With best regards, see you in the next episode.